So here we are today at um, Coombe Hill Nature Reserve. As you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty flooded today. It's, um, it's wet, one would say. But this is a perfect example of a floodplain in action. This is um, actually the canal here. You wouldn't believe it, but this is a stretch of the canal. And that goes from the Wharf car park here, about two and a half miles down, where it actually um, enters into the River Severn, or, or used to enter into the River Severn. Um, and over time, parts of the canal have gone to succession. So we've got like a lot of wet woodland, um, areas of sort of water capture, um, reed growth, uh, really, really good habitat for things like reed buntings and reed warblers along the way, sedge warblers as well. And they, offer, they all breed here in the springtime. But as you can see at the moment, obviously this is winter, it's flooded, and this is about as far as we can actually get onto the reserve. It's a really good example of why floodplains are so important. I mean, it's holding all of this water across such a massive area. I hate to even try and work out how much water that is. I'm sure somebody clever has done the maths on that, but not me. So the reason floodplains are so important is the storage of all this water over a winter period, you know. Obviously the water's coming down through the catchment and it's got to go somewhere, it's got to flood out. And this is a really natural process and floodplains are really important from the fact that they attenuate water, they store water and stop it actually flooding out homes, but also that they capture a lot of carbon. They're trapping sediment and obviously all the vegetation that grows here throughout the season also sort of stores carbon as well. So really important from that perspective. So all you can see right now, whilst the site is flooded, really it, from the aerial footage that we've taken is obviously the withy beds. So they were traditionally managed withy beds. So actually one of the cottages up at the wharf is called Basket Weaver's Cottage, which sort of ties in the association that in the past, this was a managed landscape and those withy beds would have been used for making baskets. In the springtime, when the water has receded down a bit, you will see the scrapes. And these are sort of like wetland features that are important for breeding wader birds, ground nesting birds such as avocet, oyster catchers, red shank and lapwing that we all have breeding here. And occasionally we get a little ring plover as well. So we've been doing some work over the past year to try and enhance those scrapes and make more diversity on the scrapes for breeding waders to actually access. And we're hoping to, uh, to see some increased abundance of those species actually using the site in the future. Really important over the winter during the flooding period for uh, overwintering wildfowl. So you get thousands of ducks, things like widgeon and teal, but also uh, pintail shell duck and a number of the geese species as well that actually use this site as, um, as an area for shelter and for food source over the winter period. When it's this flooded they do go off to other sites and that shows the importance between the sort of the connections between these wetland sites in the Severn Vale um, and the Severn Estuary. So if one site's really flooded then they'll move off to another site which has everything they need to survive the winter. So another important feature of Coombe Hill is not only the wetland side of it, but also the scrub. Um, we've got a lot of mature hedgerows here, a lot of willow, willow pollards, which are a fantastic feature for wildlife. Um, because they're pollarded, obviously you get a lot of decayed wood, so you get a lot of invertebrates breaking that down, which is then a food source for other birds. And the birds that come in and migrate to this site and then they've got um, feed for feeding their chicks over the spring period. But one species that I do want to point out is, um, is the mistletoe here. Obviously, it being winter, um, we don't normally associate it with Christmas and, and love and affection, but um, it's a very important species in the Severn Vale. It's, um, it's quite um, abundant in the Severn Vale as a species. And that's possibly because of the climate, the old management of orchards that used to happen in the Severn Vale. Um, but it likes to grow here at Coombe Hill as well. Um, you can see it all along the hedgerows, and that's probably because of the birds that are actually feeding on it, eating the berries, and the berries are very sticky. And when it gets on their beaks, they wipe it all over the rest of the trees and scrub around the environment, and then it actually grows on those trees. So mistletoe is a parasitic plant. It requires another plant to actually be able to take hold and then to grow. 
So with it being parasitic, obviously eventually, if it gets really abundant in a, in a tree, it can actually kill it off. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, a dead, dead wood standing tree, that's good for wildlife as well. You know, woodpeckers, we get greater spotted woodpeckers here and green woodpeckers as well. So, you know, dead trees are really important habitat. But mistletoe in itself, you know, that's used or eaten by black caps and thrushes. So we get a lot of field fares and red wings over here in the winter months that have migrated in and spend the winter in, in the UK. And they'll spread this mistletoe throughout the throughout the hedgerows.